Hello, I'm Richard Ma, Senior Solution Consultant at Workday. Workday Adaptive Planning supports company-wide planning across all functions in which demand planning plays a key role. Workday Adaptive Planning is an enterprise planning platform you can use to plan, budget, and forecast any demand planning activities. So let's get started. Many of our customers benefit from connecting detailed marketing and sales models within Workday Adaptive Planning. In this example, we'll gather inputs from marketing and sales leaders to drive a comprehensive sales plan. Business leaders can have their own views and dashboards that focus on the key metrics and data that's most important to them. Each perspective is configurable to the user. The demand sales plan perspective focuses on consensus planning, including inputs from a product manager, sales manager, and a marketing point of view. The supply plan perspective focuses on how those sales will be fulfilled, open POs, available inventory levels, and committed shipments. We can use these dashboards to review historical data and then adjust the forecast from different perspectives. We can review and edit at the product level perspective, the SKU level perspective, the sales team perspective, the marketing team perspective, and finally, review the impact of all of our edits in the consensus plan. Here in the historical dashboard, we can see last year we sold 182,000 units for a total of $28 million of revenue. Here we can see how those units were spread throughout the year. And we can also see that product A1 is the most popular and that the West region is the most active region. Up here, I can see easily the context of the data or select to control what data is displayed. Now that I've reviewed the historical data, I'll use this dashboard to update my forecast by product. The first chart shows me my current forecast across product families, product family A, product family B, product family C. And here are the details about the forecast at the product level, including the forecast method used. Since we expect product A4 to do better than in the past, we'll override it by 5%. Similarly, product C1 is also expected to increase units next year, so we'll override the forecast by entering a direct number of units in the forecast. Notice the weekly forecast is immediately updated to include our edits. That's the power of in-memory calculations. All data is immediately recalculated in real time. Every report, dashboard, and driver-based model is up to date. Other tools require batch processing to see the consolidated results. In this example, we'd like to apply adjustments at a SKU level versus the product level adjustments in the previous example. Let's begin by reviewing data for the West region and SKU 1001. For SKU 1001, we'd like to make a total unit adjustment in period two of the year. Again, immediately, note the change to the weekly chart. The period input is automatically spread out to the weeks that make up period two. The sales team typically is focused on sales rep performance and often looks at customer level data. Here in this perspective, the sales team would like to adjust a forecast from a customer and sales rep level. Here we can see customer two makes up 279K of the total 1.1 million forecast for this particular SKU. Our sales rep has told us customer two is expecting to increase their purchases of SKU 1001 next year by 1000 units.
Once we've saved our change, we can see that puts customer two in the top slot in terms of sales. So far, we've seen how various groups can plan demand from the product, SKU, and sales team perspectives. However, marketing events will also play a role in demand. The marketing team is planning events that will drive leads and sales. In this scenario, our marketing team is adjusting demand forecast based on marketing events. This chart tells us how many additional units will come from budgeted marketing events. Here, we see the possible number of sales coming from proposed marketing events. In equals from included events, out equals from events that are proposed but not included in the forecast. Now let's see what happens when we adjust the forecast to include one or two new marketing events. By including these two events, these two marketing events, we can clearly see an additional 210 units have been now been added to the demand forecast. In this demand plan, we've seen how various product, sales, and marketing teams can view historical data and make adjustments to the plan. Here in the consensus plan, we see how it all comes together in one accurate and comprehensive final demand forecast. This demand forecast can be utilized by other divisions like finance to achieve company-wide connected planning. Next up, we'll look at an example of a supply planning model. In the previous exercise, we looked at a demand planning model. In this supply planning model, our supply plan will ensure that we have enough supply to meet the demand forecast. Here in the summary, we can see our final demand forecast, how our sales versus inventory levels look throughout the year, as well as get a breakdown of those numbers, including open purchase orders and the shipped units against those purchase orders. Now let's take a look at those open purchase orders. From a quick glance at this chart, I can see that I will not have enough products for product family C to ship based on my demand forecast. This is an indication that I will need to open additional POs to obtain additional supply for product family C. Finally, let's look at our supply plan from a committed shipment view. Often, it's important to understand when shipments will arrive to ensure demand can be met in time. In this example, we can examine the planned delivery dates and adjust individual shipments if needed. Based on the freight type, C may take 30 days to arrive while Air Express may be overnight or second day. In period two, I can see that I currently will have a total of 23,250 units delivered. If I know I need more during this period, I can look at adjusting a shipment for quicker delivery. Here, I will adjust the shipment on February 15th from C to ear. And immediately see the change in planned delivery units for period two. It has increased by those 2,000 units from 23,250 to 25,250. To summarize, with worth the adaptive planning, you can model and create any what-if scenarios for your demand plans and investments, experience ease of use by any business user, and utilize an enterprise planning platform to create models that link back to your corporate plan.